Hey y'all, it's Paul and welcome to the couch! You know what I really fucking hate? Walmart. I know everyone's kind of like required to hate Walmart to a certain extent, but mine goes beyond that. Mine goes in the, in the terms of Buzz Lightyear to infinity and butt sex. Infinity and beyond. My hatred for Walmart is about the same as the elderly's hatred for Skrillex. I don't really get it, I don't really get the appeal, and uh, after my experience with said subject, I feel like I need a cold bath and to gouge my ears out. And I'm 90% sure that Walmart is like the younger brother of hell. You know, do they keep in touch? Are they really good friends? Are they buddy-buddy? I don't know, you tell me. How are their torture methods? It's pretty much the exact same thing. If you somehow, all of your life, have been able to avoid this godforsaken world that we call Walmart, let me describe it to you and your experience there from start to finish. Your experience at Walmart will begin by walking through a pair of slider doors that have not been replaced since the early 90s. Then you'll experience a dry blast of air directly into your eyes, which if you ask an employee, they'll say it's meant to keep bugs out of the store, which I would believe them if it wasn't hitting me directly in the eyes. It's like they practically aimed the fans at your face. Do all bugs fly face level? I don't think so. I think we'd swallow a lot more bugs that way. My theory is that some sort of heroic target worker snuck into Walmart, disguised as a Walmart worker, and, and, and built these fans. So they're not meant to keep bugs out, they're meant to warn us and keep us out. Pfft, cold blast to the face. This is what is to come if you enter this store. Once you walk through the doors, you are then greeted by an elderly man or woman, who basically life has forgotten about. And their one job is to stand there and be happy and greet whoever comes into Walmart. But these people are not happy. They're not happy at all. Have you ever heard that? I mean, some of them just give up greeting you. They just hand you carts, and then sometimes free flyers and freaking coupons. That is their life. Maybe these people aren't even, like, elderly. Maybe they are, like, 35 years old, and that's just what happens to you when you work at Walmart for 10 years. And then the only way to break the spell is for a pretty girl to kiss you. That's what I want you to do, Grifflings. Go to your nearest Walmart and start making out with your Walmart greeters. I want to see some hot... Walmart action in the days to come. Now back to the story. It's about at this point at your experience that you start realizing that your feet are sticking to the floor. Now I know they clean the floors because t Walmart is open like 24 hours in some areas and sometimes it's just open 24 hours on a special event like Black Friday. And I know you can see them cleaning them, but here's my theory, is that they mop the floors, which doesn't really pick up any dirt. Okay, there are globs of dirt everywhere, and when you mop it, it just spreads it out into this fine, like, sealant of snot. The very fine coat. And this right here, this next subject, is the reason why I hate Walmart more than anything else. This drives me freaking insane. In the world, you stick to certain sides of, like, traffic to keep traffic flowing. For example, in America, you stick to the right side of the road. Th this rule applies everywhere. When you're in like a, 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 on the sidewalk or when you're like running on a track or, or there's a specific direction you should be going in to keep traffic flowing in some sort of orderly manner. This, this, this rule is even applied in like grocery stores and when you know you stick to the right side of the aisle so that traffic keeps flowing. In Walmart this doesn't exist! Have you ever noticed that? Because I noticed that. There's just elderly people wandering in different freaking directions just going everywhere and you can't move. You get stuck behind someone who's like 90 years old and they can't move more than like 0.2 miles an hour and they die in the store because they can't leave and they starve to death. And I could go on and on and on because there's been plenty of scandals, there's like plenty of websites that are made just to make fun of Walmart, but I'm gonna stop eventually because then this will turn into a feature length movie. My point being, is that we all hate Walmart. We all loathe it, we all dislike its existence, but we keep going back. And I know it has low prices, but let's be completely honest. If we go to Walmart and buy 80 things, and then you go to Target and buy 80 things, Walmart's prices will be like two bucks lower. Is it really worth it? Now it's time for the Paul Davis Griffin picture of the week.
I'm gonna show you the picture in a second, okay? I'm not gonna show it to you quite yet. I was uh, on chat roulette a little while ago, just by myself, not with Drew or with anything, and I was basically just sticking around, and I was seeing it, you know, if people recognized me. When you do enough chat roulette fun videos, you kind of start just enjoying going on and being social, because it's not work anymore. And uh, eventually I ran into someone named Steve Cardinal. <laughs> Steve Cardinal's that one dude that did that one chat roulette video to the song, I wanna see your peacock, ka, ka, your peacock. Uh, first I was like, this has to be a video. First off, there are plenty of people who go around and like, I've seen projections of myself and Drew Molino on chat roulette before because that's, you know, you troll people, you make them think they're talking to someone famous, they're not. The reason I found out it wasn't like a video, a troll video, was because I started talking to him. And we had like a five minute conversation about YouTube and stuff like that. dude. You're Steve Cardinal from uh, from that chat roulette Katy Perry video. And he's like, yeah, yeah, he's actually really chill, by the way. I expected him to be a lot crazier. He's a really chill guy. And he's like, yeah, yeah, that's me. And I was like, dude, have you seen uh, chat roulette fun? No. He had no idea who I was. He said I should be in his next video. Uh, I don't know if he was just saying that. He was just blowing smoke so that I would go away. But there's a very good possibility that his next chat roulette video, I will be in it. He said it should be up sometime this week. And if that happens, Grifflings, go the frick to that thing and, like, message up the comments. Be like, there's Paul Davis Griff and you should check out his videos! Because I know that's what I want to do. <laughs> Who knows, maybe this might be a blessing in disguise and that'll advertise my videos a little bit. Whatever, whatever. Uh, I'm selling out. The Ray Day 123 asks... Hey Paul, if you could meet one famous person, who would it be? Question mark, question mark, question mark, two days ago. <sighs> Philip Seymour Hoffman. If you know Philip Seymour Hoffman personally, please, I worship the guy. Have you ever seen the movies Pirate Radio or Happiness? And then the movie that's coming out recently, it's gonna be uh, uh, what, The Master, and it's gonna be about Scientology, Capote, The Big Lebowski. Before the Devil Does Your Dead is so good too. And then there's Doubt. Let's not even, there's no comparison to Doubt. Doubt is in, Doubt is one of my favorite movies of all time. Oh my god, I love the dude. He's so good. He's like my, he's, he's my like inspiration. That's who I want to be. He was nominated for a Tony. That's awesome. And I was rooting for him. I don't have cable, so I couldn't watch it. If you know Philip Seymour Hoffman, just be like, you ever heard of Paul Davis Griffin? Well, here's his stuff. And he's going to be like, this is stupid. Basically, that's what he would say. And then I'd, he'd be like, yeah, but he really likes you. Yeah, but his videos are stupid. You want to meet him? I don't know. You know, I don't think he lives anywhere near me. I could be completely wrong. What if he lives in my town? I don't I'm making stuff up. Have you ever just wanted something so badly that you started imagining it happening in your head? And eventually, like 20 minutes later, you forgot that it's not actually going to happen? May, my girlfriend, was like, I have a surprise for you, and somehow, it was just like shoes or something, but somehow it got into my head that she was gonna bring Philip Seymour Hoffman. Like, I sent her a text with that joke, I bet it's Philip Seymour Hoffman, and like 20 minutes later, I'm just like, running around my house with a notepad, planning my day with Philip Seymour Hoffman together. We're gonna make skits, and then she's gonna be a guest on the couch, and then we're gonna go and have smoothies. Oh my god, I feel like such a fangirl. Is this what you feel like when you watch me, fangirls? This is weird. All right, that's my time, Grifflings. I love you so much. Tune in next week to the next episode of The Couch.